Okay, so uh, motion to open the meeting. So motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're going to do a roll call tonight. Uh, we have John Stokes on Zoom. Can you hear me, John? Can't hear you. We'll try again. up there <laughs> do another test John give it a test John John can you hear me John can you hear us no <laughs> 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 can anyone hear us Just hang on, folks. This could be a long night. <laughs> Technology. Should try again. John, can you hear us? Can't hear him. Give us a he minute. Can, he, he can hear he us. Can hear us but we can't Give us a minute over there on the Zoom. Yeah, Say something, up. John. Still nothing. Andy, if you go to the speakers under Real Tech Audio, there's a little arrow above the hundred. Right above, yes. right above the hundred. Yep. See if you can select a different. John, you want to try again? Someone talking? Nope. Still nothing. Oh. Speakers. <coughs> Headphones. Is there a switch on those speakers? <laughs> One more time, John. Yep, I can still hear you. Hey, hey we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> All right, so we'll do a roll call on Zoom tonight. Appointed board member John Stokes. Say I'm here. Yep, here. This is Wally Sorensen. Present. DJ. Present. Brad Legals. And we're missing Jim. Yep. All right. So first up will be the uh, adoption of the meeting minutes, approval of January 4th, 2022 meeting minutes. So motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're running down the uh, list here. Whitestone Village. Um, open the meeting for a the use of Georgia Street for emergencies, 
access only. So um, motion to open. So motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, who wants to start? So this would, should we take up uh, Whitestone agent? So does somebody from Whitestone want to start? If you, yeah, you want to just, you can talk from there if you just want to state your name. We don't have a. Um, I'm Kathy Chadwick and on the board of trustees at Whitestone. I live at the foot of uh, Georgia Street at the next building on. And I just want to say, I totally empathize with the issues for the residents on Georgia Street. I completely agree, too much traffic going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I just want to propose to me the most logical solution, I think, would be ex uh, much better signage. So the little sign that's attached at the back of the stop sign at the top of the street of Georgia on 97, it's not even facing oncoming traffic. Okay, it's also illegally attached to a stop sign. I've learned that you shouldn't be doing that. I don't really care, but the fact is one can't see it unless you're coming dead on straight because the sign is like that where you're coming from this direction, heading south or heading north. So to me, a simple solution really would be Georgia, a better signage that says Georgia Street is closed to all traffic except Georgia Street residents. Whatever way you want to word it, just just have better signage as one, because I've driven around and I've seen road close except for residents. I think that's what you should do, because unfortunately, nobody's gonna be out there policing it. Nobody can see the sign, especially if you have somebody new, you know, if we have guests that come in and we forget to say, don't come down Georgia, because I live lit literally like if there were one more house down, I, I'd be it. So that was, um, to me, and my, my thoughts after, and I've lived here for um, 16 and a half years. So I do, I do recognize the issues. I really empathize. It's a, it is a problem. I feel bad for them. You know, they lived there decades before Whitestone was built, was a dead end little street. So I, I get that. I really, truly do. Um, it's a little hard for us to go an extra mile down around and make our way to our house. But at least with my proposal of better signage, you know, emergency vehicles can enter. There's no issues, there's no gate as was brought up. You know, it's, a, it's a, to me the simplest, most logical solution. Um, I agree with that and Wally, I think. Yeah, it, I just had a few questions just to, get, you know, cause we, I was on the board when this was approved. So, um, show of hands, how many people actually knew that was in the special permit that you could not go down that street? How many of us? Yeah, from that lived there. Wiped when you out. buy a home, they don't point that out. Yeah, that's what, that's my question. They do not point that out. Yeah, but it, but Rhonda right. You're who? Rhonda. 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 Rhonda Designer from EP Management. Rhonda, how long you been there? Oh, from the big, um, over 20 years. Okay. So I, Rhonda, I don't live there. I'm the management agent. Right. So, okay. Rhonda, you and I chatted several times. We about did. This and issue. I was at the, at the sitting right here in 2013. Right. And I remember you yeah. and us in the board at that, whoever the board was at that time. Right. Yeah. And at that time, um, I think it was acknowledged that probably most unit owners when they bought had no idea about that special permit. Yeah. So who's in charge of that? What's that? So, so when, when a unit sells and it goes to a new party, and for those of you, you know, welcome to Groveland, but that was agreed upon that right. somebody on a colored piece of paper, yep. instead of the 72,000 documents you signed at closing, this one should stand out and says, thou shall not go down Georgia It does. Street. So what happens is when someone purchases, we have no control what documents may or may not be given. However, 
once we are found who is buying that unit, as part of the practice before they even close on that unit, we send them a welcome package. And in that welcome package is that colored piece of paper that you just spoke about mm -hmm. that talks about, it's a memo from the board explaining to the, you know, the buyer that uh, they cannot use that um, means of um, Georgia Street. Mm -hmm. It also attaches the special permit to it. Kay. We also, at every time we send out a newsletter, mm -hmm. we have a little section in our newsletter that reminds residents. Uh, is that email newsletter nowadays, or is that? Uh, is that no, it no at Whitestone we mail it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of people still don't really pay have a lot of email access, so we mail that to the residents. We okay. do our court. We do it twice a year, mm -hmm. uh, in the spring and in the fall. Uh, at our annual meetings, we mention it as part of the manager's report. I'm the one who mentions it. Now I will tell you we haven't had an annual meeting in two years because of COVID. Um, when we did get that letter um, in January. Mm -hmm. I met with the board and we actually sent out a special letter to the unit owners both by mail and by email mm -hmm. pretty much telling them you know this is what it is you should be following it to begin with but we've go just received a letter and now we have to go to a hearing and this is what you should be doing mm -hmm. um, and we emailed it and we mailed it one of the feedbacks we did get from a few people was if you put in um, Alyssa Drive in a GPS or Waze or any of those ap applications. If you're coming from Haverhill, it takes you to Georgia Street. Yeah, I, I don't. And I don't know how, I don't know if the town has any influence on trying to get that resolved. I, I don't know anything about that. I, I think Andy was um, talking about that too. Anyone can go into Google Maps and report an issue with a street and report it as like whether it doesn't exist anymore, whether it's a dead end and it's not reported as such. Um, there are ways that anyone anyone can go in and make those reports. Right. So is that something that. the town would be willing to try to rectify? I mean, I think it's more so the more people that do it, the better. I mean, Google oh, I see. So it has to be not just one person. Right. It would have to it. be on your side as well. I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not something that the town is going to take sole responsibility yeah. for doing. But it would be helpful too if Georgia Street people could do that too, if they're the ones that are, you know, affected too. I mean, the more yeah. people that can do it, because we were told that um, that's part of the problem. Some several residents emailed us after they got that letter. Um, we've sent letters to UPS. We've sent letters to FedEx. They don't listen. You know, I mean, we don't have a control as much as we've tried to. Um, I think you know that we have a major, some of you may know, we have a major construction project that has started at Whitestone, and the contractor has notified every single delivery vendor, et cetera, that they have to use Diane Circle. What, in what and project's out. going on there? We're redoing roofs and decks through the whole property. It's redoing what? The roofs and the decks. Oh, the roofs and decks. Yeah, okay. it's yep. about a nine month project. Um, so we're, we're willing to listen to any other recommendations. Um, We've never tried to not follow, but what's interesting is w you and I, and s you know, mm -hmm. we're here in 2013. We've never heard from anyone. What's that? Eight years of now. I'm not suggesting that people aren't using it, but we have not heard from the town saying this is a major problem. So, one of the things that we're just curious about is: is it many people that have lodged complaints, or was it just based on? A specific incident. I mean, we'd like to work with the well, town to understand it because it, it's like every time you see somebody, and that's the f you know we're public officials. We work for the for the people and the citizens of Groveland. So if you see them in the coffee shop or the Dunkin' Donuts line, they're going to tell you, "Hey, what about Georgia Street?" <laughs> and then, and I've been down there a couple times myself, and you know, I, I was just you know kind of looking around, and somebody comes flying by yeah. me and almost takes me out on the street. So, sure. so it's I, I, I think it's it's been over the time, but since you and I spoke. And the, the problem with every single sale and every single subdivision, when we put one of these things together that takes a long time in the hearing process, no one from this room was here when we did this in 2004. Right. Okay. And then what's ironic I is that it sounds like the real estate agent has failed everyone in this room because they don't even know about it. And even though you send out the package, they're supposed to get this as well. We have the same problem. We even put it in the deeds mm. and nobody reads it. So it's it's got to be it's got to be brought up again. So one of the things the board kicked around was 
much larger signage with a different color, like the orange construction sign color or the yellow sign color, and it was the highway department, I, I believe, in conjunction, with, you know, with, with your with your team over there, right? That you know, un under item 38, that had to put those signs up, and I remember that discussion. We yep. wanted something big so you could see it, and we got fought on that, saying, "No, we don't want anything obnoxious and and etc." And it's like, well, nobody's going to be able to read it, and you can't see it if you're driving. Well, we didn't do this sign. That was done by the town. No, no, it says in coordination with Yeah, but we did not put that sign up. We did not have anything to do with the size uh, or the where it was put up. Yeah, so it's, it's got to be put up so you can hit it. Uh, and it might be two signs because it's got to be on both sides exactly. so you can see it. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when you're coming in. Um, you know, turning in. You're it's right, poor. From Haverhill, I, coming I drove past there last week after the last sign. month. It's, you can't it's, even see it. On, when you're coming yeah. out of Groveland right. and taking a, a right, a direct right, you don't even know that sign's That's there. Right. Unless right. You're and and when it was put up, we did say we were actually surprised by the size and where it was placed. Yeah. And um, I forget his name. I know he's not on the town. I have it in my notes, but um, we were pretty much told that this is where the town wanted it, which was kind of surprising to us because we knew it was in, it is in ineffective. Yeah, so we can fix that. Um, so who makes your signs? Uh, we have used um, out of, um, so, uh, we've used Sign Center and we've used, I uh, use a new Dawn sign. Okay, so if you can get, do you know standard sign sizes? Because uh. I don't anymore. Um, Sign sizes ring a bell with you, Rob, on dimensions, two foot by three foot. I know you can get them all different sizes, but there are standards. Four by three foot. Yeah, something, something big. And if you want to shoot a proposal over, I think, to the board, just submit a, a proof. You know, hey, we're going to put two of these signs up, and they're going to go here. Four by three, four by three. One, at the one at the entrance from Whitestone going into Georgia, and one coming off of main road into Georgia. So let me ask you this, since you sent out the notices, has the traffic slowed down on I was Georgia? just gonna say that, and, and Kathy lives, like if she says. If you live there, yeah. you notice, and Bob lives there, so. So Bob, have you noticed a dramatic drop in traffic? Uh, yeah. Without the FedEx and without the... Well, there's, there's a number of issues here. Uh, I guess the first one would be, we're, we're all aware of this, but you ignore it. Doesn't oh, sound... Well, okay, but, but, but some, I don't know if you can hear me on this or not, but um, I don't... I don't know if, if you know, 10% ignore it, 50%, I have no idea. The, the problem is, and you started right out with, well, the problem is the sign's too small and it's in the wrong spot. However, you all know the sign is there, you choose to drive through it. So if you live on Georgia Street, the people on Alyssa Drive <coughs> are kicking sand in your face every time they drive by your house. That is how it feels, okay? I, I gotta tell you, you all know and you all choose not to follow the rules. The posted speed limit in town is what? Anybody know? Pick one, 35, 40. But if you don't see a speed limit sign, are you free, free to drive 50? No, you're not, okay? So right there, you know it's restricted, you opt out of the restriction, and you drive through it. That happens every day, every day. And I can't even comment on, you know, Trying to fix GPS maps or Google Maps, UPS uses UPS Nav. Everybody's got their own vendor. Everybody's got their own software. There is a way to influence that. I don't know what it is, but that would be something you folks would have to figure out to get the deliveries to stop coming down. There was a truck last week, a tractor trailer full of lumber one week ago. I don't know when the letter went out, Rhonda, but on a Saturday morning, fully loaded truck, Barreling right down the street, FedEx, UPS all day long. But the residents and the guests of the residents, I think, are the real problem. The, the, the visitors, the kids, they don't live there, I know that. They're 20, 30, 40 years old. They don't live there. They come and visit, they barrel down, they barrel back. It happens all day long. So I can't imagine 
that if you say, well, <coughs> let's increase the size of the sign and we'll move it down the street a little, that it cleans up the problem. I'm okay to try that, but when that fails, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to bring every resident in after that because I, I, uh, how many emails or responses did you get when you sent that out that people said they didn't know anything about it? Yeah. Um, and I think Tommy did the last day, but I think that's a first good step because that's not what the committee does at all. And I do believe that a lot of the talk is trying to bring people together. You know? Do um, how does your management company do o over at Whitestone Village? You have like a maintenance maintenance account. Everybody pays into it. That kind of thing, like condo fees. Yeah, that's what we do. Okay. And is that is that what you manage everything with the condo fees? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I suppose the next step is to start issuing $50 fines for everybody that goes through and it comes out of their condo fee. And that'll jack, that'll get some people upset about that. But, you know, of course, that would have to go into. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah. I, I think, if I may, I, I think what we should do is we try the signs first. Yeah. Give it some time. Let everybody talk to their friends and relatives. And you listen, Bob. A 20-year-old kid is going to take that right when he looks at the GPS. I mean, it's not going to happen in the snap of a finger, and it's not going to happen overnight. So I think they're in the, you know, they're on track. They're trying to stave it off. They're doing the best they can. They're not having, they haven't had a meeting in two years, pandemic. I think we start with the sign. They're here. They want to rectify the problem. Let's start somewhere. Let's take a six weeks. See how that works after the signs are up. Construction, you know, we can't allow any construction vehicles down there. Mm. Um, and I think we go from there. We take yeah, a look the, at the that signs. Would we'll that was the answer Bob's question is, is that how do you enforce it or how do you get people to pay attention? I, I don't think you can start slapping signs on people. Well, I, I think the threat of the fine um, it should be enough to get people, if you see on that sign that says, you know, you could be fined or, or well, something. Another thing that yeah. people will remember, and, and I know town council was looking into it, there was discussion back in 2013 for someone on the board that maybe it was foolish to do this many. I'm not suggesting he's in favor. But yeah, it's not their jurisdiction on that. Yeah. yeah. So why not do it again for police matters? It's yeah. a civil matter, I think. It's it, not. It, you it's know. It's Security, yeah. maybe Whitestone puts a security. security. Well, you might have to hire one. Is what, what we're talking about. You could put cameras. You could be could cameras. Um, is there any type of repercussion for anybody that doesn't follow any other type of Whitestone Village rules? If fines, fines right? Yeah, there you go. So if if someone is on a regular basis going through, they could just give a fine. It doesn't necessarily have to come out of the HOA fee, you know, budget. They could directly be yeah, fined. Okay, that uh, sounds reasonable. The bigger issue is here down the line is how do you how do you come about trying to stay it? Camera. Camera at the entrance that takes a snapshot every time a plate comes down. Or how do you get the plates up if they're just for somebody to come in and do it? Well you, you have the authority to run those now with the registry. You can <coughs> come in and put that up. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to fill out the form. And uh, yeah, insurance companies can get plate information now, everything. Sorry, just curious. There's a sign at the end of Georgia Street or the entrance to Alyssa Drive that says, no trespassing. 
Who enforces that? Which one is that from? It's on their property. So I'm just no curious. One, yeah, no one sits there and says, oh, Because I, I know somebody scolded the kids on the street from riding their bikes down there. Just just curious. Um, okay. So I, I think I, I think to sum this up, um, bigger signage, you're going to get the town to approve. If you can individually fine, I think you can put a reminder out once we get the new signs up again and just put them in there that um, – that's going to be the next step that you're you yourself through the management company for not following the rules are going to set a fine and put a good number on it so people pay attention. I, I think, and I can throw this out to the board, and John, do you have anything to add? No, I don't have anything <coughs> significant to add at this point. I mean, I think it sounds like a good place to start what's being proposed. I'm, I think, like several people in the room, a little skeptical as to how effective the signage is going to be, but... I mean, it sounds like they've taken some good measures right off the bat to send out reminders. They've got the package, the newsletter, uh, you know, improving the signage is a good next step. And then I think we can take it from there after a period of time to see if it, if it slows down at all. I think I'm, I'm in favor of that as well. I'm not in favor of the fines just yet. Let's see if it curbs it down. If it doesn't, then there'll be, there could be a little bit more, you know, discussion on enforcement. No. Uh, Bob Stapel. Can, can we define slows down a bit? Put or, a traffic counter. Or, or stops? Well, hopefully it would stop, but I don't think it's ever going to stop. You're going to get some stragglers down there who are going to get reprimanded after they go, oops, I didn't know. I mean, eventually it should stop, but I don't think you're going to snap your finger, Bob, and overnight it's going to just... Yeah, it's, it's going to take some time, I think. There's sort of a behavior change takes a long time, so... Oh, I'm, I'm and with all due respect, because I've not seen any of the communication, but certainly um, it's a communication issue and it's an education issue to teach people to first tell them and then teach them we got to go a different way, whether it's another mile or whatever. Is it mostly coming down? It's both. It's both? Yeah. They're allowed to exit, but not to come down. Right. Okay. They're allowed to exit, correct? Yeah. 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 It, just my personal opinion. I mean, I don't like exiting that street. Um, it, it's a terrible curb cut. Mm -hmm. It was not designed for the volume of traffic that you have there. This goes back to the earliest discussions we had, Wally. The road wasn't designed for that. That's right. And it, that road's being now expected to handle uh, a volume that it was never designed for. And that's why we went where we went. We mm -hmm. said, all right, we'll take half. We'll let them come in. We'll let them come out. Can't go in. Mm. Um, and yeah. it was never good. It's never been good. I can't imagine uh, we're going on the honor system here with no balance of consequences. Well, we'll uh, see what the other language than comes it, out. Okay. I think we're we're going we're to go on the honor system. Okay. So I mean, they're here. That, that shows that they want to. Yeah, well, they, they, they'd be foolish not to be here. So are we going to take my count off my doorbell on how many cars come down the street every day? No, we should get a traffic count. Because have a traffic counter. Let's yeah, agree on that. Let's Do you have one? No, you guys didn't back in 2004. Yeah, the highway department does it. I'm sure they got it. Um, can we get a note over to the highway department, see if they can set up a traffic <laughs> counter down there in coordination yeah. with Ron over yeah. here? And then at least we can get some hard numbers and then see what's going on. What, what's the theme? When, when, how many residents are there now? Hundred fifty, okay, so that's wonderful. So the hundred and fifty, how many shockers were there when you sent that out? I mean, how many claimed didn't know it or claimed they didn't know at all? Um, I saw the last five or six people. That's it. And what do your friends say that live there? I, I the ones that live that 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 live in the street, they never speak to me directly. <laughs> I'll shut the lights off on Sundays. Well, like you're just looking. Right? Yeah. Um, I'll just tell you a little story. During COVID, uh, last year, a lot of deliveries, more so than you would typically do, like even a oh, yeah, that's right. yeah. normal cars, a lot of food delivery, a lot of people did 
not even <clears throat> some people still don't. Some people are, are just born into the you know, the elderly and then mm-hmm. they don't. So we have more volume of people coming and going. If I walk a lot, I walk three miles almost every day around Mike's Center. And I just come right out of the Georgia Pier. I'm right there at the end of Georgia. So I actually do walk up and down the street to see that it has significant significantly decreased in volume. Uh, markedly so. And I'm a registered nurse, I know how to count. So what my point is is that I think because of COVID it's increased dramatically. Because as I walk around, it's like a car here, a car there. And it wasn't the cars, you know, pre delivery, DoorDash, I don't know what it is. Um, all these things. So I think it's gotten a lot worse in the last ten years. That's my point. Hmm. I, I think I believe that. I think it's probably part of it. it. There's just more deliveries taking place now than ever before. Yeah, I mean, significantly uh, higher. Yeah, everybody. So. The GPS apps everybody's using is Waze or whether it's right. Google. They they're gonna go the quickest route. They're not looking. They don't know anything about the Whitestone Village <laughs> mandatory. You know, not exit only. Only one way. I tested it. It's only one way. You only see it if you're taking that left-hand right. turn on mm-hmm. it, and if you're taking a right, you cannot see it. You can't see it from the right. You can only see it from the left. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's just yeah. a white sign, and most people don't look at them anyway. You They're looking for a colored sign. You can't see it at night either. No. So, so you're going to get us some proofs. You're going to tune up the language. Um, I, I think the institution of a fine from you folks, so you don't have to come back in here again, would be a really good threat to the residents even you know first time offense warning second time offense tw- whether it's 25 you know incremental if you know you have repeat users that are doing it over and over again how, how are you uh, excuse me how are you going to find amazon and ups and fedex and doordash well the commercial operators uh, they got to have mean, a headquarters jacks and lumber if, uh, how are you going to find those people yeah, it's, it's going to be a so one i think yeah. i think we're just going to have to hold off on the fining for now well, it's it's more for their residents. residents, just for no, residents to make sure the residents are following the, the rules that they're supposed to use. You get a new driver or a temporary driver, and not, they miss a memo, they're going to come down the rail. You know, that's that's unfortunate. That's why, it, and for those of you that that may not know or didn't remember, that was an emergency access road exit. The, uh, that was not supposed to be a main in or a main out, and and there was the original plan showed a gate in it. So why didn't the with plan keys to the fire department? So why didn't they gate it from the beginning? You could go back into that. You know, you're not going to gate it now. The, the original, the original Whitestone one plan, which uh, this board did not approve, and then a Whitestone two, we tried to clean up as much as we could. So, um, and that's why this one here was was a lot more detailed. There is no approval for Whitestone one, yeah. and that's how some of this stuff got in there. So we did it. But yeah, that's that could be a step two, and of course that's in coordination with police and fire to throw a gate across that thing with a lock. And we do have places where that exists. Um, on I, I will be looking at polling the group. Hmm. And the reason being is right at the bottom of the list right there. I don't know who allowed the high vent set up in this building. Mm-hmm. Like whoever the, the bias is at the top, the chamber at the top. Um, <coughs> all through this ride, there are four high vents. That's it? First one is right at the corner of Georgia and Alyssa, and that is packed to resignation. So that's my issue is coming down there those first two dozen units. I got a high vent. Mm-hmm. So I would initially oppose a gate if it was a very last resort. I want a gate just like it actually where I can take my knock box and just open it and leave it open while that's I'm right. doing control. That's right. Well, that's. That's that's the way they're right. designed to do that. That's and right. That would be a last resort. Mm-hmm. I, I like the sign with chalk, and I'm hoping that takes care of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the polling group. Well, I, I think you can put a news update, Rana, with um, and get it out to everybody that this is what we discussed, this is what we're going to do, and if this doesn't work, this is what's going to happen next. And I'll tell you what, I know for a fact that those knock gates, I got one, and they're not cheap. No, they're not. You got a gate opener, you got a knock key, and you got a, that's 25 grand. So, you know, I I think, go ahead. Right here, that says 
they were complicated. Can you tell me how 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 the whole explosion the gas explosion mhm up until the the only place where I saw it was was through the side of the thing I'm gonna tell you I drove at an s u v right through that gate because I don't wanna be trapped with a bu- catastrophic occurrence that happens blocking my my vision well that's why there was an emergency exit right but but I'm saying that because of owning a car that's why it's but it's being abused well I'm not sure I'm sure I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm saying it's because I'm sure I'm not I think that's the reason there was an emergency exit because there was an emergency exit before it just that but that doesn't seem like it's a rational no that's why we're putting the onus on you to think about these things and whatnot but there's definitely more to it than that part of it yeah 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 I agree with you on that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more to it than that part but I think that there's more
May 15 was the deadline on that, deadline yeah. 12? Correct. Or sooner, you can do them anytime sooner. Okay, and then um, also uh, Rhonda's gonna put out to everyone at Whitestone um, minutes of the meeting to what we discussed, the signs going up, a reminder, and then the two other things that are gonna go with that, that if this continues, this may occur, a gate and or fines based upon Whitestone Village rules. We can have an update sometime May 15th. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah so we're gonna coordinate with, with the highway and when they can do it and, and at least get some counters up onto that. Um, and take a breath, just making sure we got everything in that motion that we covered. I think so. I think you've. Okay. And then. Is it what about the notices, the signs? Yep. The notices, you're gonna work with the notices to each resident and they have to endorse it once, once you get the official language in on nice shiny bright paper. So you're, you're gonna put out, matter of fact, you can tell them in April, okay, at that Zoom meeting, say, we're gonna send out a release form or whatever language you want to use for it. And you're gonna sign it, every unit and every occupant is gonna sign this, that you're aware of this now, these signs are going up and no one shall pass coming in on Georgia Street. Yeah, acknowledgement. And it's just an acknowledgement of it and that way they, and we'll start zero time so to speak, that everybody is now aware and it shouldn't happen with the residents and it's only for you, it's probably for your own good. So if you if somebody says, I didn't know, or you say, well, you know. Yeah, and then you can hit them with the, you know, hit them with your own internal fine and have an ice cream social day with it or something. You know? <laughs> Does that complete the motion? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> John, did you give an eye on that? You got an eye on Yep, aye. Okay, motion flies. And I just want to say thank you for doing your due diligence and putting yeah. out the letters on a monthly basis. And I mean, it seems like you guys are trying to do it. Um, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. You know, it, it seems like, uh, I, you know, I, f I forget your name, but you know, I'm, I'm new to all this. You're one of the most inconvenienced one because you're at the end towards Georgia Street. So you have to go all the way up and through um, in order to get there. So if you're if you're willing to do it, there isn't any but any excuse for anybody else not to do that. So yeah, and, and from a board perspective, what I'd like to find out is we have a lot of things not only in in, in Whitestone here, and this is your your decision here, but um, not only in Whitestone, but it's in other subdivisions too, and something always falls through the cracks. And even though we put in there that it's got to go with your deed and it's got to be passed on at every closing and it goes into perpetuity and it just stuff just gets missed so uh, if you get some feedback just from the board's perspective where people say you know yeah i signed 87 pages i would love to find a better way to point out some of the stuff um that is necessary and when homeowners change hands and you get to number two or number three because no one's here for the 2000 year 2002 hearing that you signed us in 04 okay to know what due diligence we did and how many years and all the design phases and everything that went through to, to make sure certain things happen. And in some subdivisions, there's conservation <laughs> restrictions and everybody moved in and got a chainsaw and a swimming pool and cut down a forest. And, uh, and it's like, how did you miss that? And it's like, well, I, I guess that was page 73 and I missed it. So uh, we'd love to find another way to maybe point that out. I think we, we can discuss that. I've got some ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to hear yeah. back from yeah. Melissa. They don't care. We've seen that too. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
Oh gosh, yeah. Well, one of these days we'll get that right. But anyway, so thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Thank Appreciate you very that. much. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, next up, Pentucket Regional School site plan approval update presentation of the lighting plan. No, I don't think he needs any induction. No. Introduction. It's Bob Danforth, former plan board member, yep. Bob former uh, chair. For a test wall, you have to run out there with your helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> when it's complete. Get my lumens meter. It's almost like, th this is almost like a play <laughs> by play. Yep, it is. And no pun intended. <laughs> And that's what, y right after the school's done, a year after? Uh, yeah, this is supposed to be started uh, sometime this fall. So this is where the uh, middle school is setting now. Uh, middle school is coming down. Uh, and the stadium here. Um, proposed uh, four poles with four sets of lights. Sound lighting, LED, state of the art controls, and the coaching staff. Uh, this is the baseball field on the left side. One side of the green, and one to the right. Same thing here. Beautiful looking field. Yeah. So, are any of those lights going to be staying on? Um, Will those lights be there? Are there on timers? They're going to be going off at a certain X amount. Uh, we are going to have control of the lighting. So yes, and we are proposing no later than ten o'clock for a night game. And, uh, and this is does this include the parking lot too? Uh, the parking lot is uh, we we turned on because of security. And okay. Those typical LED lights that. Yeah. Bob, do you have do you have a fixture <coughs> spec? Do you have a fixture spec? This is all the controls and and everything. I, do you have right here? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Woo! One hundred thirty-eight thousand lumens. Pretty good. Oh, it's gonna forty watts, twenty eight thousand. Okay. John, can you see this? <laughs> Sorry, John. Looks pretty no, it's all right. Yeah, right. yeah, no, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I can't see that very well. Fifty one, Yeah, this is good. This is all um state of the art. <laughs> well it's all yeah, Yeah, it's got a, a nice control unit. They're all on one. It's only 120 volts, yep, 20, 20 amp oh, loads. Yep. It's got a, a couple of good ones, though. 138,000 lumens. That's yeah. That'll track some of the grove of mosquitoes, right. won't it? Uh, yeah, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of those are, uh, are not on the football field. Some of them yeah, I see them. They're all different uh, numbers here. Uh, mm -hmm. On the multi purpose field. The 
Very nice. So, yeah. So, what do you need from us, Bob? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Coming in, we need friendly neighbors. So in addition to being really friendly good. neighbors, they, uh, yeah. in addition to being friendly neighbors. Well, well actually, we are a resident also. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they are. Um, but um, we had a, uh, issued a um, waiver on um, site plan approval for the project that is located within the boundaries of Groveland, mm -hmm. uh, allowing Wes Newberry to take a more comprehensive look at the project in its entirety. Um, they have been doing all of the peer review, all the construction monitoring, um, in addition to the third party under the building commissioner, which we, we share as well. Um, but in regards to the stadium and as part of our decision that we issued, um, allowing them to, to be deemed as a, a formal official process, um, we had asked for updates on all construction matters relative to the stadium specifically and to make sure that they do periodic um, meetings with the planning board to make them aware of what they were thinking as they go through the process. So that's also, in addition to being friendly neighbors, it is a requirement of our I do remember. allowance for them to move forward. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, so this looks like there's going to be, nine, or at least at that count, if that's accurate, 99 individual heads, and they're all buried. Um, not, doesn't pull much power. Um, they're the angle down type. So that's the dark sky concept that we put into the town a couple of decades ago. So, so that looks well. Um, individually controlled, so they're not going to be on all the time, just when the field's occupied. You can see that. That's pretty common nowadays. So it's good from us, or sorry, at least for me anyway. If the lights are left on, are you the one that we would call to have shut off? Well, we're <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. I'm, glad I have you, I'm glad I have your number then. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming in, Bob. So yeah, do you need a motion to? Uh, I don't know. The lighting plan motion, uh, yeah. Rebecca, on this. Or? Yeah, I think we, we can give it. I would suggest. Say, say yeah. Make it a more formal so apply process. a motion to approve the lighting plan for the for the um, football field, um, baseball field, and what was the other? Well, the baseball field, field, I think, is what's uh, Newberry. So it's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put the baseball field. So I think it's a okay. So just the football field. And yeah. I wouldn't say approve because we certainly don't have jurisdiction. So I don't think we're approving it. Jurisdiction. But I would say definitely endorse. And endorse. endorse the lighting plan for the football field. Second. Second. So motion. So motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Can I keep these, Bob? Yeah. I'm going to keep these. Yeah. these guys. Thanks, Thank Bob. You. Yep. Thank you. All right. Next up. Yeah. We have uh, discussion of Oakland Terrace. Subdivision completion, drainage, emergency access, concerns brought forward by the residents. I take it the residents are all on Zoom? Uh, yes. Um, so just as way of a uh, brief introduction, um, we had uh, received a couple of um, complaints from some of the, not complaints, but a couple of concerns from the homeowners over on Oakland Terrace about access, uh, emergency access to the home um, themselves and then as well as some drainage concerns. Um, so taking a look at the reports that have been issued by TEC, uh, Peter Ellison was on the, on the call with us this evening, um, there looks to be some outstanding items that might be impacting the drainage. Um, so he's here to speak on, on that specific and also I believe um, Mr. Gill and um, Mrs. Santos are here to, to discuss their specific concerns with their specific lots. Um, we did invite the Dahulus to attend. Um, they were going to attend, and we just got an email um, right before the meeting started saying that they would not be able to attend, um, stating that they've talked to the individual homeowners and expressed that these issues are being addressed are, or have already been addressed, um, and they don't feel as though that they're a concern. Okay, so Pete, why don't we start with uh, Pete? Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, good evening, Peter Ellison with TEC. It's good to see the board. It's been a long time. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, so I'll start with the, the drainage concerns. Um, there are still some modifications uh, to be done to the two infiltration basins at the site. The uh, outlet control structures are installed too high, um, it looks like. 
So those need to be modified um, to keep water off of the, um, the access road, um, as well as the, the small um, stormwater basin closest to Salem Street um, has not been built yet. Um, and that's been noted in our reports um, for a couple months now. I think we haven't really seen any construction activities out there in a while. Um, so we weren't really pushing hard, but I assume uh, in the springtime, it will be probably a, a cleanup of those drainage issues um, and other various things around the site um, before they can close everything out. Any other issues out there, Pete? Um, well, as far as the issue with the uh, emergency access, um, it was something that we had noted in our peer review. Um, and what was agreed upon during permitting and signed off by, I believe by the fire department was to install that hammerhead turnaround area. So a fire truck could drive up Oakland Terrace um, and turn into the hammerhead and be able to, to do a 180 and turn back around out to Salem Street. So where you've seen that issue? Conclusion was <laughs> so everybody hears me. Um, the conclusion was the contractor did the absolute minimum just to meet the code. So he the code has been met. We can gain access with the fire truck to get within fifty feet of that front door on a what they call a private driveway access. It's not a public road. It would have to be wider. Um, we can get an ambulance down to the third house and turn around in their driveway at the end mm -hmm. and get it out. The fire truck would have to be backed out to that hammerhead about the halfway point. And the resident, um, the concerned resident, what's your name? Uh, Joe Gill. Okay, and the concern that you had did you know the chief was down there and you can access it within 50 feet? Uh, no. I don't know what he said. Yeah, I couldn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I said, did, did, you, uh, were you, did you hear the chief when he said that it met code and he can get within 50 feet of your front door? Uh, I, I did hear him say that just now, but I didn't know that beforehand. Okay. And your concern was a fire truck? ambulance couldn't make it to your front door is that what the concern was correct okay so i mean it, in all fairness the um the department had gone to the homeowner's house to do an inspection of some sort or to help with something and it was shared that there was some concern about the driveway um which alerted the residents and obviously when you hear a fire to firefighter say oh well, there's concern about access to your house they obviously were like wait what um, and that's kind of how that started. It wasn't just like a, oh, they can't access our house kind of thing. It was kind of something of that nature. I know Mr. Hill can speak more to that, but I think that's what alerted the residents as to whether or not it would be adequate. So that's probably why we didn't have a, a follow-up from the chief at that point in time. So just so the Mr. Gill knows, uh, Chief Valentine wasn't the chief when this, subdivi when this development was approved. And from our perspective, we do look at the plans and we do send it out to the fire department to take a look at it and at the time they did approve it so that was before chief valentine's time correct we had an interim chief at the time and he did approve the development when it came out unfortunately it was the bare minimum i right. think in the future some other things need to be visited but we can't revisit this it's already built and completed correct is there minor things that could be done um i think the private driveways need to be a little wider like like six inches wider or like three feet wider uh, i would say at least a foot wider the minimum i believe is eight feet on a driveway ten feet on a emergency access road so 
if you go to the 10 feet, we're much happier so instead Pete, of the what, eight. What are the driveways now? Um, <clears throat> I don't know exactly what the driveway widths are. Um, certainly something I can measure out there and, and get back to the board on them. Is it binder or is it, are they got the two coats on them already? They got a finished coat on them? No, the, the two coats are down. The two coats and the structures are high. Yeah. Uh, the, the structures that I was referring to that are high are in the, uh, in the infiltration basins themselves. They're not, uh, not in the pavement. And the Duhulu's on here to talk about it. So. No, and I think the other thing we need to visit in the future is when we get these long driveways, if you have a road and it's this long, you have to have a cul-de-sac at the end to turn the fire truck around. I think something we need to visit is if you have a driveway this long, the developer needs to have a cul-de-sac so vehicles can turn around and get out. Ambulance goes in, and I believe uh, number three has a young child that has um, allergy issues. And that was their biggest concern was getting the ambulance in. An ambulance can get in and turn around, but it's tight. If you have an a, a turnaround that can turn a fire truck around, the ambulance is going in there, picking up the patient and leaving without even a second guess. I think that's a, something we need to look at in the future because Groveland seems to have a lot of long driveways. It's rural, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. I, I remember this development because I just got on the board, so... Did we approve widths of driveways? No, no, we didn't. We don't go over widths of driveways. The uh, in this particular, this is where um, I think it's section three point five of, uh, of the subdivision rules and regs. That's why we send that that out. And, and granted, we got that approval, but we also take a second look at this thing. If we can't get a truck down there, and it needs to be a couple feet wider for a certain amount of length, um, I think that's well within our our jurisdiction to amend that to, to meet an emergency access. And I, we just kind of need to know, Pete, what exactly we're talking about with that. So, so probably Pete would definitely have to go down there and take a yeah, measurement? Yeah, take a look and, and uh, you know, might be a joint meeting with uh, Chief Valentine and the just kind of, yeah, the Duhulus too, obviously, and uh, find out if there's a mod, wh what exactly is it? It sounds like it's minimal, but um, it certainly would help. It is. Okay. And yeah, I can, I can certainly set up a meeting with uh, Chief Valentine, the Duhulus, and, and um, anyone else from the town that wants to attend. Is that a go? I think it's a go. Okay. Let's make that happen. Okay. And then I, I see another resident here uh, on, I believe, uh, in... Are those issues similar, or th were there different ones? And are there other issues than we, than other than the drainage and the fire? Well, this is Jessica Santos. I'm from um, property uh, house number two. Uh, our issues are actually in terms of the water drainage. So um, Pete just mentioned the uh, two ponds that are in front of our property. One is right in front of our house that apparently the the piece that is inside, and I really apologize. I, I'm not an expert. I don't know what that piece is called. I guess it's too high. But besides that, uh, we also have, um, and Pete, please help me uh, figure out what the name of that basin is with the huge boulders that are right next to our driveway that are in the middle of our yard. Yep, that's called a f uh, flared end section. It's the discharge point of the drainage system in the backyard. So that drainage system, once we discussed this with the Hulus and Steve actually did come here uh, last Friday, I want to say, and he took a look at everything, but of course everything is frozen. Um, we've been telling, and I think I had a discussion with Victor, that that black pipe that is in that hole, I guess that is supposed to be the inlet of the water into onto those boulders. There's never water coming through there. It's just the water collecting because you dug up a hole. So when it rains, it just collects there. Uh, Steve took a look at it. He told us that basically they subdivided the lots. The town came up with their plans. He executed on town's plans. And now we as the owners are stuck with water in several pieces, plus the water sitting on the surface all around our house. We are falling into the yard, and I'm sure, Pete, if you actually took a look at the lawn or lot when it wasn't frozen, you basically needed uh, waiters to walk through a lot because you just fall right through. 
we have a small child. So the first issue is that the, the ground itself is just unusable. Um, by that um, flare that you say, there is a grade, however they made the grade, there's another pool which does not even look like it was something that was planned or maybe it was planned to take the water into the wetlands or whatever is on the side, but it keeps pooling. The hulus, um, they reseeded it once after we moved in, they reseeded it again. And I mean, the, the grass just rots in that spot. It just collects water. Um, water is really not going anywhere from a lot for quite a while. Um, so we have the safety concerns in terms of people falling through, tripping over. I'd actually fallen through and I think it was in front of Victor that I got stuck in the mud there. Um, my daughter with the neighbors who are here actually on the call, she was playing with their daughter playing with the ball and the ball went into that flare uh, uh, collection right next to my driveway. I, I could barely go onto those boulders and to get her actual ball. I don't know who designed this, how this was designed, what the plan was, how this is supposed to work, but it's not working um, how it should because we don't see where the water is collecting. The water right now is making paths through our yard, whichever way you look. And can I, can I just add on to that quickly? That drainage system that she's talking about drains downhill. We're downhill, so the drains to us we have we have never been able to use our backyard. We moved in last August. You can't even walk in it. And the front yard, I have pictures. It's an ice skating rink out, out in front of our yard. And it also carries onto the walkway. So at the end of the walkway towards the garage, if it's if there's a lot of precipitation, if it's raining for a couple of days, it's you can't even get from the garage to the front of the house. So, you know, that we both have severe water issues that were never divulged to us. So, um, you know, it's, it's concerning long-term being here. We, we, you know, we both bought our dream houses here and we want to make this the place we want to be. And it's just, it seems like there's, there's a lot of red flags with the property. So Pete, this question, because I haven't seen it in a little bit, is it because it's not, Graded properly? Is it graded to the house? Is it is it you know is, is it a grading issue? And then the other question would be, is that actually a pond with a loomy sandy bottom? You know what I'm talking? Is that supposed to drain? Does that have a calculation where it, it holds water for you know a few hours a day and then it's supposed to be gone? So I don't have the plans in front of me. Yeah, I, I have the plan open. If you want me to share my screen, sure. I don't. I don't know if that would help since I'm remote. But what's the, are we getting runoff because these retention basins are, are the water's not going into them or is it? Um, um, well, I think the, the retention basins, um, they, they weren't functioning well during construction. They got built up with sediment. So we asked the Dehulus to rebuild basically take out like six inches of material from the bottom of those basins and rebuild. Um, and since that time, they have been performing better. Um, the, the flared end section was the ultimate discharge point from those two basins. Um, now, if you all remember, when this plan was approved, there was supposed to be a portion of that second lot that was supposed to remain as wooded area. And that's kind of the, I think part of the reason why the location of that flared end section looks odd because it, it right now, if you go out there, it looks like, you know, it's just right in the middle of the yard. That, that really was meant to be right at the edge of the, the wooded area that was supposed, that was supposed to remain wooded. Um, so that's part, part of the issue. Now the, the, as far as the what's going on with the wetness out there, I'm, I'm wondering if it's a compaction issue because all of these houses were built well above existing grade. So it's not like um, high groundwater should be an issue um, 
just just purely based on the alterations to the existing grades out there they they lifted grade quite a bit um on the two lots that we're we're referring to um, i'm sorry if i if i may um when we purchased this house uh when we when we signed the contract all of the uh, all of the lot was cleared that flare that you're talking about that is smacked up in the middle of our yard was not there i showed up one day and that thing was just dug up with huge boulders inside so that was not there um that was built after everything was cut up so be, i don't know yeah. if anybody was able to take a look at it and say hey you know <laughs> now this is not the spot because this is really not the spot the ideal would be to push it back towards the end yeah but pete i, I yeah. think you know that may have been part of the plan as a storm water feature you know again i don't see anything up there i don't know if you put it up there or not We, yes. we as a board can't see. Peter, do you mind sharing your screen? Peter, of course. Here. Thank you. So, Brad, can you see where my mouse yep. is hovering? Yep. Yeah. That's the that's the flared end section. So that's tied in via pipe to these these two basins here Just goes back. now you can see that this was supposed to be the, the tree line the tree line yeah. i remember they cut that down yep so this this drainage was really meant to just run into the woods and then go where it goes today or where where it went under you know pre-development condition which realistically is just kind of like down towards this property line and out, out to the wetlands where is the bolded uh structure that she's talking about that's what? that's this flared end section it's um it's built up it's built with uh with boulders around it just just to prevent erosion i'm sure i have some pictures yeah so that's this it. this no. is kind of the view brad of these these rocks are in place at that flared end drainage outlet mm -hmm. and the reason that this grass isn't growing properly like the rest of the grass is just because of the amount of water that's moving through here right to get down to the yeah. to the wetlands ultimately is uh if I, may, if I may pete the water is not that is really not making the path right where you see the grass between the boulders and between that where this bald spot in there that's actually elevated so it's like you have two basins and with the little strip in between. Oh, there's one on the back side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, the way that you'd fix that is to regrade this area to get positive pitch, to get this water moving through. Yeah. Um, now, does that, will that drain away from, like, we don't want to start getting extra water because of that either. Like we've already had water in our basement twice. Yeah, it, I mean it should it should be directed down toward this tree line here, yeah. kind of at the property line. Drain. Right. No, well, excluded pipe or something in between. I would think they had a perimeter drain in every house. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, I mean here. Yeah, but the, it sounds like, like a line. Peter. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't. I'm not there to see it, but it sounds like it's a grading issue. I mean, I'll, I'll take a drive by probably tomorrow. Under snow. It's tough. It's under snow. I just drove. I drove by there before. Yeah. So could we could we potentially say it's a grading issue? Yeah, I, I think uh, based on Miss Santos' um, testimony, you can probably confirm it is a grading issue because the water. She's saying the water just can't get out of here. Can't get out of there. Right. Houses are designed so you you shouldn't get water in the basement. I mean, right. That's. that's Right, so this is no, your house is on the right, like right the one that's next to the picture. This is like a view of the um, from the driveway, from the edge of the driveway. So behind is the house, basically. Yeah. My question is the owner of this property because this is not how the property was sold to us. the uh, The original listing, and if anybody 
wants to actually take a look at it was that we were going to have a full acre of cleared usable lots with this flare drainage thing in the middle of the driveway in, in the middle of the lot and now talking about that we're going to grade it and put the uh, stream down through the middle of my yard I, I i really don't know i don't see how this is even so I how this could be even acceptable to us is there any other solution that we can look at to I see if this flare can be moved like a french drain or something for both of our houses exactly well th we don't market the properties and we don't you know we don't tell the developer how to market the property so as far as the way they market it to you is as a cleared one acre lot we have no jurisdiction over that but we do you know we do approve the plan that's in front of us with lot 68f and um if the storm water features aren't working if the drainage isn't working then we can have some enforcement with that but you know i'm supposed to have a clear one acre lot i can't there's no enforcement for that because obviously you see the plan in front of you and that was approved by us what, what happened to the tree line? They, they cut it. <laughs> I was just going to say the plan was approved then with the tree line. Parcel sixty. I thought it was over by Washington Street. Yeah. Kind of behind. Um... And I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer as to what happened to the tree line. The view in the photo is supposed to be wooded, right? According to the plan. Yeah. Is yeah, that that's right. Yeah. yeah, we had to. Um, I'm sure, you all remember we had to we had to have the Dehulus come in. Uh, to a planning board meeting to review that issue. I think it was ultimately determined that, um, you know, once these properties are sold, the homeowners have full right to cut those trees anyways. So it was not deemed really a big issue, okay. if I remember correctly. So who, I'm a little confused. So who cut the trees on 68F? uh the the developer okay and why did they cut them i think mistakenly they cut them so i think the biggest thing was that there was like uh there were two issues that happened with the trees there was one that was like uh showing a tree line that didn't exist which is <coughs> we had to bring them in and tell them to replant right and then in the beginning when they were clearing they had cleared this area when there was a tree line shown and then just took it down in addition to clearing all the way on the back side of Benjamin and using it as access for the actual site clearing between 38 the Benjamin and Fort yeah. and Paris. So that was the two separate issues. One of them being a mistake on the plan that showed a tree line that never existed. So it gave the appearance of a buffer. And then the other one being that they literally just took down the trees and said, well, our septic plan is going to go in that area. We weren't sure. And then it went to, like he said, the back and forth as to whether or not they really were necessary and whether they would stay or whether or not there would be a clearing. And then we had the neighbor come out. I believe um, her name was uh, um, Kat Colombo or something of that nature, the uh, butter over on the other side. And they had agreed to keep a couple of trees, and they went out and they flagged the tree. Yeah, and, right. and, and so that, that whole debacle. Wasn't that the 68 November parcel? The issue when you first came in on the right hand side wasn't that the that was the one that didn't exist but it showed on the plan yeah. showed on this the one plan, was yeah. the one where you went out and flagged yeah. those trees to remain so well trees are you, you know well within our jurisdiction and well within our approval on this but it, it, it we got to fix the drainage and we can't do it in the middle of the winter so we're gonna have to figure out what's going on with this but uh obviously trees we have, I think we've been down the tree road, and we yeah. we we did designate what six or twelve trees. I, I don't have it in front of me. But well, they we can't be we watching out people's front lawns, and we can't be having these quicksand. And and yeah, I think the thing has got to be graded, and the catch basins, you know, sticking up two inches. That's a a, a finished coat issue because we're supposed to put them in, snatch the coat, and then jack them up with the bricks underneath and and activate them at that time um, for the finish coat. But yeah, it, it seems like there's way too much standing water there for. Well, flooding basements. I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's kind of crazy. Like that one, too. What was what was that last couple of pictures there, Pete? Yeah, I'm trying to. This is a good this is a good view that kind of tells the story of the. Uh, the drainage that's installed too high. And so that water just comes in and sits there? And it goes yeah, so over the road. Too. See this see this black riser that's yeah, coming yeah. out of the pond? Yeah. 
that that's meant to drain this pond. But the problem is the water gets to the road before it gets to that before pipe. It gets to the pipe, yeah. All right. So that that just needs to be modified so that it uh it drains the pond properly. And, and, and that goes to that flare. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, both both this one and this this pond across the street. These across are both the connected. Those are connected. Yeah. yeah. Um, both connect to that uh, flare. Now. You can see the standing water in this photo. Yep. Since this photo was taken, we had them rebuild the stormwater basin out there. So it is working better now than it's shown in this photo. Um, but again, we'll, we'll need to reassess that in the spring, kind of once we, once we get back to um, working conditions out there. Okay. I think the and modifications can... to these basins um, will be kind of on the punch list of items. And one thing that I can add is that one that you see right across the street, that is always dry. Yeah, she's correct. Always dry. Always dry. Yeah. No, no curbing. It was all, it was all designed to be a uh, sheet flow. Okay. Yep. Now, part of stormwater management, Pete, was there um, infiltrators off the gutters? Down, down south, are they taking the water? Yes, off the roof? they are. Yep. Are those in? Um, I believe so. Do, do the property owners know? Uh, what What was the question? I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. Are there um Are there underground infiltration uh, tanks behind your house that the roof ties um, into? I believe so. There is something that still has the stake and has a little cup on it. And I did ask Steve when he came here last week, and he told me that that is a, a vent that you can open and see if it's full from the guttered water. So I'm, I'm yeah. guessing that that's what it is. Okay. It's yeah. right behind our house. Yeah, we, uh, Brad, I, I have field reports on record from like basically weekly visits, so I can pull, I can pull pictures on those uh, installs. And I think we still, you know, Rebecca, there's still bonds on that, right? Uh, yes, there's still a, a tripartite agreement um, in place. Yeah, we still got a top coat to put on, trees, and that, and then it's just like a major grade. So Miss Santos is on lot 68F, right? Yeah. It comes out, that's the, the out, outlet where yeah. the rocks are there's there. You can do and now that, it comes, yeah. and now, but now it seems like, is that coming down in front of Mr. Gill's property that his front door, because he's, his garage yes. on the right hand side, Correct. so that's all just draining directly. So that's more grade that his but land this should is be before, before TEC made him regrade it. But you see the um, is it a cone or a barrel there? So you see the cone, the yeah, the yeah, yeah, whatever to it the is. right, yep. To the left of that is a stormwater feature, right? So well, that is too high, yeah. So yep. once they once they cut it, that should take the water, yeah, but that's draining. That's taking over, the water out of prior to Mr. Gill's, Mr. Correct. Gill's so beyond it that. Hit, it should never hit his house. So right, he's but, got sheet flow the, going over the road mm -hmm. is my. But that's, that is the inlet and it's going out where. It goes out from that flare into the what yeah, was wooded. Yeah, so the green must be bringing it to the front of Mr. Gill's house, which is down towards the way that the pros, that tree line yep. kind of at the very point. So I'm assuming that grade just goes directly to the front of his house and kind of where his driveway is, instead of down towards the back, where you would go to develop behind property. And the, it, I thought I heard that he's raising the driveway, so that makes it even more uphill to come down to me. Is so actually, they're raising this driveway. But his house should be up, and the grade should be up. And I, you know, you can't see it now. I just so when please, I drove there. These His houses house are down. raised. They, they're, they're down, but they're up. It's 102 feet there. It's 103, and the flare is at 104 or 6. Uh, it's probably probably close to 104, yeah, oh, or 100, 103 maybe. So they have to regrade it. So it's about the same yeah. the, when you as the there, Gill's house, road, right? Hit the emergency access. I just went up there, and I had to back all the way out. I was gonna. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to turn around in his driveway. I so had to turn I backed out. The driveway. I went down could, I, could I add something to the emergency conversation? Which, um, so if 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 the end result with the drainage is what it is, um, the pebbles that are alongside of our driveway 
I don't know whether they're doing anything or not, but it doesn't seem like they are. And it might help to widen the driveway over those. You know, because all, all I care about is, you know, we've been to the hospital three times since we moved in. So he, he my, my son has a ton of allergies and all I care about is he can, if he can quickly get out of this driveway as fast as possible. And, and I think all of us could agree that, you know, a semantic issue on how wide the driveway is pales in comparison to, to his safety. You know what I mean? And, um, or anyone else, someone could fall, someone could hit their head on one of those rocks that are over there. You know, the Santos has have some safety issues on their property too. So, um, and we weren't privy to that, those conversations, you know, and, and no one said to us, just so you know, the fire trucks are going to have trouble getting down your driveway or you're going to have a swamp in your, in your yards when they were selling us the house. It was, everything's going to be great. You're going to be able to go to town hall and get your plowing approved and the road's going to be approved and everything. And it's not panning out that way Mr. Gill, I, I on a lot of issues. And, you know, there, like I said before, there's red flags and, you know, I hope you guys can take that into consideration when, you know, you're deciding what the right thing to do is with the property. You know what I mean? So I say to Mr. Gill and members of the planning board, first and foremost, this is a private way. So there is no trash pickup. There is no plowing. Who's maintaining the private uh, way? That was my question. Right now. The homeowner. So they, There's a the document that's included in their deed that tells them that they're responsible 100% for the maintenance um, and upkeep and repair of the roadway and that the town of Groveland is not. And they will get trash pickup, but only at Salem Street. The trash pickup right. will not Will not back up in their driveway, right. okay. correct. So, okay, so, so we just got a couple of things to review. That, that's already in the deed in the document. That was yeah. from, from the get-go. As far as grading issues, weather permitted, you know. Yeah, we got to get out there and see that. And then well, the Pete tree line too. But I if we if we take the water out of the the dueling ponds there, okay, and put it back in, and it goes out to the inlet with the trees down, you know, crossing 68 Foxtrot, there's got to be, you, you know, some. Some type of system, whether it be Pete, a very wide French drain system covered with fabric or something that kicks it out to where it was supposed to go, not washing out um, uh, the other party's That's property right. there. So, Pete, when we looked at this, and I, like I said, so the calcs and everything, they worked from the original design? We're not supposed to. Uh, the calcs worked, yes. Yep. So, what do you think the issue is? Um, well, the, the stormwater basins aren't functioning the way they should. Um, that, that sometimes happens. Um, but we can still ask them to work on those to get them to improve. Um, you know, with the hope that more water is infiltrated in those basins, um, rather than just caught, transferred and sent out the flared end. That's the hope there. Um, you know, I think when this was originally laid out, this location of the flared end made a lot of sense. It, it was going to run right into the woods where it would really not bother, be bothering anybody. Um, but obviously, the, you know, mistakes were made and, and trees were cut that should not have been. Um, now, if that runs into, is there a, I don't know how wet it is. I don't know where the groundwater is. If that ran into an infiltrator, you know what I mean? Would that work? I'll uh, run this, run this flared end into an infiltration. Correct. Instead of running in the flare end. Yeah. I think we could like uh Wally's idea of maybe a French drain system too, that would um, at the surface look cleaner than just like a swale would, but still allow the water to move and you, and you'll get some infiltration that way as well. And and you, 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 can, you can intentionally more. direct it away from the Gill's right. house as well. Yeah. 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 And um, the only the, the only problem there with that um, solution is the drainage easement associated with the uh, the system stops right at the flared end. So, you know, long term that that's that uh, French drain is just on private property. Yeah, so that's that's just the uh, 
a paragraph issue that um, the developer's got to figure out onto that. But the, yep. the, you shouldn't you shouldn't pay that much for a house and have a and, and have property that you can't use. And that was the sole purpose of the CBA, believe it or not, for the contiguous buildable area was so that it is dry. It's not wet. It's you can put anything you want on it, and apparently, and you can't pool water either. So. So we just got to tweak this drainage design to go down. If you take all the trees out, which suck up an awful lot of water, and uh, then it's got to go somewhere. So it's it, if there's a drainage easement, it's just going to have to. That's get why extended. I said the infiltrator because I yeah. we've already by, we've already passed the trees. They yep. came in. It was known that anybody that bought the lot could take down the trees. There was no. Yeah, but, no who cut. but if the developer took down the trees, was it the request of the homeowner, or was no, it no, no, no? But there's still even even when the lots were sold, yeah, we discovered that there's no, there's still not a no cut zone. Right, right. So okay, I got so, that. But um, so to correct this, when the when the trees do come down, there's going to be access water, which we're seeing obviously, and so so yeah, if you go in through an infiltrator, but you still got to direct it. Pete, what's, in the ground. Where's, where lot 68G is um, up towards the property property line where it says 133.53, uh, is that where that was supposed to go? And what's – I'm not seeing what's what's there. Yeah. So what is on that – is there a wetland back in there? Do we have any other plans? And where was that supposed to go? Uh, this, this, all, this land all slopes down to this wetland. Um, oh, okay. Okay, okay. Down so here. In the right direction. So, the the natural the natural contour of the land is to flow towards I don't know is the top of the page north no just toward the top of the page yeah um across 68F and then really at this property line it kind of turns down towards the wetland right so so if that if the French drain system along with the infiltrator pushed it down to where it was supposed to go um. You know, going into lot 68G, and then naturally flowing, you know, underground into the wetland. Um, that that would probably take a lot of water out because along the way it'll dissipate, um, and it, and you won't have a surface um, obstruction. So you, you still have a usable yard. It, it's just that the, the drain system would be underground. And then the other solution yep. is to, you know, flute pipe it too. Or something or down along the way in the in the French drain system instead of depending on how that would be, be built it would take care of the water well and I may I, I've got to add to the homeowners that we are not engineers so we're just having a discussion right now of potential with TEC how to rectify a problem mm -hmm. but we're not you know we're not qualified designers and we're not engineers Absolutely. That's understandable. What I'm just trying to understand from this whole discussion, we're talking about French drains, which that is something I've done research on my own, even though I'm really ignorant in terms of this drainage system, but I've done a little bit of research and I, yes, that is one of the solutions. Now, what I'm not hearing is about this flare end. Is this going to move out of our middle of the yard? Because this is for well, safety issue for our child. Design. Yeah. We're not designers and right. we're not engineers. So, you know, with TEC's help, in weather permitting, you can't, you know, we can't see anything right now. Or, yeah. You know, as the weather progresses in your favor, we can take a better look at this and come yeah, up so, with a solution. So, Pete, you can you can come up with a couple of uh, <coughs> engineering solutions to this. I, I think we bat a few around, but I think we can put some on paper and see what they look like. Um, you know, for you uh, to yep. send it to the board and, and come up with some solutions. Um, to take care of those issues because we can't have um, you know quicksand on lots and that water yeah go. and <clears throat> I do think because the um, because the grade on all these lots was lifted several feet it might be it might just be a compaction issue that takes you know over this winter it might settle a little bit and be more firm next next spring and summer yeah um, but again yeah something we should definitely take a look at um, I do just want to give the board a heads up I uh, for liability reasons, I can't come up with a design for this project, but I can call um, the design engineer, Thad Berry, and get him out to the site and provide guidance to him um, so that he can ultimately come up with a solution for these issues. I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, 
right, so we beat that up. Is, and then we're also going to address the, uh, can you set up the meeting with Bill, the fire chief, or board member? To yes. The board know when it's going to be so we can all, and, and, you know, the homeowners, of course, that they're. And the Dehulos for the next meeting. Yeah. So we'll take a measurement of the driveway for the fire chief. You want that Thank you. Meeting? Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Thank you very much. Okay. Next one. That's it for the agenda, right? And we just got an mm. update. Town planner sure. update. Nope. Oh, Matt, oh, master plan. plan. I'm sorry. It's okay. I um, see that. Yeah. Because Rebecca is a phenomenal grant writer, the town received a grant to um, create a comprehensive master plan. And part of that process is appointing a committee. How much did we get in the grant? 75? 75. Well, 75 for the grant, but then that gives five to 80 total. 80 total. Nice job. Okay. Great yeah, job. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so we just need yeah. to have the planning board um, appoint the um, steering committee. So we've had two, we made an announcement at the Board of Selectmen meeting to let people know that we were starting to initiate the process, the planning board being the point, a steering committee must be um, appointed to, to start to divulge in information and process and all that other good stuff. And two individuals had come forward and expressed interest, um, one of them being Mike Dempsey, the other being George Moore, um, and Selectman uh, Jason Yates have also expressed interest. Um, so it's up to the planning board to um, appoint a, m a member of their own and then also appoint um, the, uh, a couple of other folks. Uh, we could probably do two members from the planning board not breaking any open meeting laws uh, requirements and have a committee of, I think, green and property consultant, um, no more than five, seven. Yeah. Who's, yeah, who's five. doing the design work? Uh, so it's Foreman Plus. They're out of Boston. Okay. Foreman Place. For us, yes. Place. Foreman Thank Place, you. they're saying. And have they done any work for the town before? Nope. Emily Hines is also, ha is it Hines? Hines. I-N-N-E-S. Um, she actually lives in West, nope. Mm -hmm. um, either Georgetown or West Newbury. She's okay. very familiar with the area um, and has done multiple um, different uh, planning efforts around the area as well. Yeah. None specifically in Groveland, but around the area in the Merrimack Valley for sure. Yeah. How yeah. many meetings? Um, it's going to be a, a, a lengthy process. This will be yeah. like a year-long process. One of the ways that we attracted the grant is that we decided that we wanted to approach it a little um, differently and we wanted to do a ULI CAP type of format. So an Urban Land Institute um, CAP is a technical assistant panel and they essentially have experts in the field come out and they take a look at specific um, aspects of, of, a, of an issue. So you're looking at a feasibility study and you're looking at um, some land use zoning changes. They'll bring out some experts in the field and they'll have like a one day type of thing where they'll go up to the site, they'll take a look, they'll take a look at your documents and then they'll have a um, public engagement session to kind of get a better understanding of exactly what the residents feel and what they understand from their expertise and then they'll issue like a little report. And each of those little reports will essentially make up one of the uh, mandatory chapters within the um, comprehensive plan. Are we doing a public survey? I'm sorry? Are we doing a public survey? Uh, it would be. I know we're trying to target multiple different ways of, of engaging the public from, uh, you know, electronically, paper, in person, mm -hmm. um, all of the above. Okay. So um, I'll volunteer as, as one person for that because I did the original, which – we have a lot of data, and from that original master plan that was uh, that was never accepted by the um, the board of selectmen at the time on the master plan, and it sat waiting for approval, and we spent one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars of it, and the good residents of Groveland funded a hundred of that. So I think I'll volunteer too, if that's all right. If anybody else wants to volunteer in yeah. place of me. So we can do updates to the board as well. So the yeah. only thing I would ask is that we would like to have members that if they are going to participate on the steering committee is that they can definitely designate the time to be on the steering committee. 
Um, so all of the reports will be filtered through the planning board. The planning board is the authority to do move the forward plan, with the master, yeah. this, uh, the master plan. That that is their purview. That is their role. That is Massachusetts general law mandates that that is right. their job. Um, so we can have whenever there is a meeting. Um, Annie, I'm sure, will be able to report back to the board specifically what's happening, what's going on, what the meeting discussed. So it's not as though any individual member would be, you know, missing. So when's kickoff? I'm sorry? When's kickoff for this? Um, so we had an initial meeting to gather some data because you're right, there was a lot of data that was done in 1995, but it was 1995. So all of that data <laughs> is outdated. So we've I had no a lot idea. of different reports come in place <laughs> um, since then. Uh, right. So we had a, a, a kind of an initial site yeah. walk. Have we? Okay. Yeah. So, so we kicked off already, and then what's the next the next phase here? So, and, and the reason why I want to I want to point this out because I think we can save the save a little bit of time. But we spent years on this, and I think we if we haven't got the data already from from Camet, we need to. Camet's it's no longer. Camet, Camet. yeah, Camet. Camet doesn't exist anymore. So yeah. what's it? Where did all the data go? So we have all the paper copies of things. Yeah, that but we what have about all their other other material? We have some of it's on on a, on a floppy Has disk. Any, who's um, the what's the new company now? So it's GM two. All right, I believe. All right, and then and does GM two still have history files? Do they still have what? The history. historic files, all the data. <laughs> um, I I we can inquire. I know yeah. that I mean Bob Blanchett is no longer there. Um, so I'm not really sure who he has as a contact over there, but we can see we can if call they're him. in the archives. Because, you know, we spent some serious dough over there. And I, th I think you're right. We did all the baseline stuff. We did the survey at the time. We, d we did, I mean, if you look around these zoning maps, that was all part of that process right now because they were, the zoning maps are 50 years out of date, I think. So uh, so we, we, get we have some good, valuable baseline data. And then this group, can we can take it, you know, bring it into 2022. And then the fi it's a five-year master plan so it's going to go into 2027 i imagine or five years from date of uh acceptance and go through but w there are some areas where we don't have to recreate the wheel and um just you know like we don't have to do a usgs baseline uh, data survey for instance on that we can use whatever we got at that point because we did a lot of uh infield survey stuff um so we can put that money maybe go a little further or do something like that. Yeah, so we can definitely reach out to GM2 and so say, yes, you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we can reach out to GM2. I just, I, we'll, we'll see what type of data they have. I just know some of it's not compatible either. It's just data. Yeah, yeah but if, if you read it, at least you can understand it. Okay. DJ or John, are you <coughs> interested in? Do you have the time? I'm good. You go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DJ, hey, you got kids at home. I have a baby. I have a baby coming in next month too. Oh, so that's, that's, gonna be that's even the better <laughs> reason you'll see him when they're five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, John? <laughs> what was uh, what was the question? Sorry, I couldn't hear all of it. Interested in uh, participating? What's the What's the time commitment again that you're looking for to be? This is This is to be participating in the steering committee. Is that what I heard? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You could be retirement age by the time it's done. <laughs> and, and just, <laughs> is, is he going to join up here? Or? Wait a minute. I didn't hear your answer, John. What was the, what was the time? I mean, I would love to participate. I don't know. I don't want to commit if I can't really put the time into it, though. So I'm just curious so what, that's gonna, what that process looks like. Can I make a suggestion? The way we did this last time is that we had – in the month, we had a planning board meeting, and then we had a master plan meeting, and sometimes on the same night, we would have the agenda till 8 o'clock doing the town stuff, and then the master plan stuff would kick off from 8 to 9. So it was, we had the full board here that could participate. Now, I don't know with this type of setup right now with uh, the folks, because I, I don't know much about them. You got open meeting law, so I don't think you can have more than two participants for the planner board at one time. So that's okay. So then, so then the two on the board are just here for the for the regular meeting anyway. So that solves the, right. the time commitment problem and solves the posting problem. But last time we did this, the whole board was here. So we did. So a lot. I'm not sure what changed in the open meeting law for the on the master plan because the it's all within the planning board's jurisdiction. So I'd have to look at that. And Rebecca, do you know? 
Um, nothing changed per se. It's just a, a preferred idea to have more people engaged other than just the people board. on the board. Yeah, just point to us anyway. Um, no, no, everyone was here. All the other boards were here too. So if we had an 8 o'clock kickoff for, for master planning, everyone was in the room. Oh, that's you can't do that by open meeting law. Nothing's changed. That's right. just the law. Why? You, you can't have a, a, a group of – you Quorum. can't have the Board of Selectmen here without posting an agenda and having them have a meeting. Correct. Each individual board or committee that had a quorum would right, have to me, have a meeting. Let me rephrase meeting. that. Um, so each representative from each of the boards of the time of the – whatever the meeting was discussing – like say conservation. So conservation had a rep in, but the planning board was the was the authority, and so, so we were all here. But what you're saying is that the, the planning board was the steering committee. Correct. So that's different than having more than just the planning board participate in the actual, if you will, a, a separate group that actually does that and reports to the planning board. She's saying this time the planning board is not the steering committee. So who is... Who is designated as? The planning board has the ability to, to look at individuals to have as part of this of the steering committee. Right. So there's still there's still got to be a head of the steering committee, and there's got to be. And we said that there'd be two members of the planning board right. as part of that. So that's the same thing. We just I instead of having a full of planning open meeting board, law, you can't do the whole. You can't right. Do the so whole board. just the two of you. To be honest. Right. So the two so of us. Two is, of that you that you is that what you're saying? Just the, because of the opening law with the planning board, or the opening law with all the other parties? Just the planning board. Okay. And then so, yeah, the steering so that's committee could easy. report, or a member of the steering committee could report to the planning board, and you could have a discussion at that point in time on what's happening and what right, they're right. working on and all the individuals. Yeah, that's how we did it last time. Yes. I think we're overcomplicating yeah. it. Yeah. So, so it was easy to schedule. So the planning board kept its schedule, and then a portion of the, of the regular planning board meeting, depending on what was happening, how much time we needed, wa was allocated for the master planning. And we then can those other members of the steering committee to, who were in charge of XYZ would come in and, and brief everybody. Okay. So so that's that's how we did it last time, and uh, that may work, it may not. But it may or may not, right, depending yeah. on what the agenda is for the yeah, next right, We'll right. have to reach out to the folks from Quorum in Place and Emily Annette Inez, I think is how you pronounce your name. Um, so it sounds like, John, one meeting a month maybe. Yeah. John, do you want to take Brad's spot on the meeting, on the uh, – Staring I committee. jumped the gun without asking you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brad and Wally had offered up. I don't know if you want to jump in front and take I over. Think it gives them an opportunity of, you know, finding out more about the planning board. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and sometimes you need a liaison, like during the day. You need. Um, if there's something else going on during the day that the, that the board can't meet to at, at night, well, you, you know, a, a certain liaison can go out. You guys too. Well, that would be we manage. Yeah, we're, we're we're managing it from the from the day to day aspect. Okay. And, yeah. and we we have John. Well, help. We have John at hello here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna join up there? Well, do you is there a do you need it or is there, were there two already on? I think we can have alternate. I would go as an alternate if you couldn't make it. All right, <laughs> I'll, I'll participate. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. And I also, you know, before we go on, I see Mike Maroney there, and I don't see the, him on the agenda. Yes, um, so that was one item we wanted to bring before you, not a vote of any sort. It is not on the agenda. We are just bringing this to your attention um, that uh, they over at – now officially 931 Salem Street, uh, the uh, repair shop and the gas station are looking for their certificate of occupancy uh, or a partial certificate of occupancy. The planning board decision issued back in 2017 specifically stated that they could not get a certificate of occupancy um, or a temporary certificate of occupancy until um, – for any building or phase of the project shall be issued until the infrastructure, common facilities, common improvements, and landscaping specified in the decision and set forth on the report record plan are constructed and installed as shown on the record plan. Um, and also following construction of the project, the applicant shall provide an as-built site plan to the planning board, the, build the building department, blah, 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 blah. So essentially, mm -hmm. all those must be completed prior to the certificate of occupancy. Um, they submitted a progress as built a that shows the yeah. building. Um, they do not have final pavement down. They do not have landscaping, but they have received a. Um, they the 
931 Sand Street has received a certificate of compliance from the Conservation Commission. Um, part of that was also landscaping that was in the, within the 100 foot buffer zone that obviously cannot be done at the moment. So the commission agreed to take a $4,000 escrow for the landscaping to be done after our seasonal restriction that ends on April 15th. So they could begin landscaping on April 16th. Um, so there, that is kind of <coughs> conservation end of, end of it. How about the as built and the guide rail that's supposed to be? So they haven't the done those, those yet. And so uh, Mike Maroney, who is the general contractor, the job team to approach me as to signing off on a certificate of occupancy. I stated that I had concerns because they had not met the conditions of the decision. Um, they stated that um, they had po posted a bond with the um, Conservation Commission and the gas station wasn't being done yet. And they've met the conditions um, as, as close as they possibly can. Uh, they can't put down striping, so there's no parking spaces, there's no arrows, there's no directional, yeah, there's no sign. any of that. Um, but that's because there's snow on the ground and they can't get that done. Um, so I said that I would bring it before the board as a, a matter of um, information. And if the board would like to entertain an official conversation for signing off on a certificate of occupancy, um, they can let us know and we'll put it on the agenda for a formal discussion. Um, otherwise, they, they haven't met the conditions of the decision and we won't be signing off on an occupancy. Um, but Mike Maroney is on the, the call tonight to, if you'd like to hear more from him about the specifics. All right, Mike, what say you? Um, well, what we have is, uh, unfortunately, we had seven months that we could not work uh, due to the uh, special permit. And so we were jammed up for the middle of October through the end of December to fulfill everything on the exterior of the uh, obligations. Uh, and we worked with the Conservation Commission uh, and, and paid a fee to get till December 30th so we could get paving and all the uh, curbing done. Um, but we could not get the landscaping done. Uh, all the water is contained within the site, so it doesn't leave the site. Uh, we had a site walk last week with the Conservation Commission. We posted the $4,000 bond. We do have the certificate of compliance, and we do have a letter from the board, uh, Conservation Board, saying that we on April, after April 15th, then we can go ahead and follow, because 90% of the landscaping is within their, their jurisdiction of the 100-foot buffer zone. So we couldn't have done it anyway because of the weather, but we also couldn't have done it because of the uh, time restraints and the uh, conservation uh, approval between November 1st and April 15th. What we don't have done is a section of a uh, guardrail, but what we did do is put in nine inch curbing, which wasn't on the plan around, uh, where the, where the uh, guardrail was supposed to go. Uh, um, we're not asking for, in, you know, exchange in lieu of, but it is not in, but we do have protection for any vehicle that's not gonna ride over a nine inch concrete curb. Um, the, and it's not a very big section. So the other thing it's not done uh, is the final coat of paving. Structures are, are raised to grade for the finished paving. So we don't have to raise the structures. Uh, we put our binder down to meet the requirements, you know, to to meet the uh, structures as is. But obviously, we'll have to chop that out before we put in the finished pavement. So what we have left that is uncovered by the conservation is the small section of guardrail and the uh, finished coat of paving. And as Rebecca said, we don't have striping. Uh, we just ran out of time to put striping down. So those are the three things. Uh, well, two things actually, the, the guardrail and the finished coat of paving and, and three things, the pa uh, line painting. Uh, directional, I mean, we're not opening the um, gas station, convenience store or, or the donut shop probably until August. So, you know, we'll be back in from permits for the, from the, <coughs> with, Sam, with Sam for the building uh, uh, for the rest of the build out for the gas station convenience store to finish it out. Um, but for Fadi's ability to cooperate, because he's already supposed to be out of where he is now, where um, Groban Electric is, uh, his, uh, he's out, he's supposed to be out as of last week. Um, so again, we're, we're
we're looking for uh, the building inside will meet all of Sam's requirements and the fire department. Um, so what we're asked, what we're saying is we have an, uh, an Asville that has three things. Um, uh, it doesn't say on the plan, uh, it says as built, it, but in an email from the, from the engineer states that this is a, um, partial because of the three things we just discussed. So, um, what about the firebox and the small guardrail you talk about is the whole back I'm sorry, the fire. What, what about the fire call box? That's all when we call box, all the alarm system is in throughout the building. The sprinkler system, everything throughout the whole entire building is done. And so small guardrail that you talk about, that's the whole back <laughs> over by the what? The guardrail is um, is uh, at the very rear corner of the property, and it's next to a retaining wall that's uh, about a foot and a half above grade from the backside. So, we, but we have a nine inch. Uh, concrete curbing that uh, is in front of that, so. So what's the nine inch curbing gonna do? Yeah, what was, what was the... Uh, the intent of the curbing is to stop a car from... Well, the cur well, first of all, no, the curbing is to maintain the water inside the property, right. you know, inside the paved area, so it meets all the drainage, so it can't run off. Um, it wasn't on the plan, but certainly it's a guardrail, it's a, a nine inch, I mean, we're not you'd have to go pretty fast to get over that nine inch curbing. So the so. guardrails to prevent anything from going over, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, and how long yep. is that, do you know? I'm sorry, what? How, how, how many long? feet? Uh, it's probably 25 feet and, and and then another 15 feet at a right angle. There's about 50 feet worth of guardrail there. It's just that we can't do it this time of year because we're in the buffer zone as well. the original engineer on that one? Um, Hal, I forget his, uh, Cuba, I think it is. Yeah, the, the original engineer w was Bill Holt and uh, uh, Jim Scanlon and uh, uh, Hal, um, can't pronounce his last name, but uh, it's, uh, who, who, uh, he does his, my, my monthly uh, visits. Um, so for the, for the uh, construction um, sites. Who's reviewing this, this site on this? Is it is this TEC? It's, con it's controlled construction. They have a SWIP. Oh, they have a SWIP. So the there. SWIP is being monitored by the... Um, okay. By the, by the engineer record. So the general contractor gets to fill it out. Okay. All their fire stuff, all their fire suppression and call and everything's in? Uh, I'm sorry. Talking to the control, fire chief. Control for inspection. We've had all all our inspections except for fire. Fire is on at Hold 10 o'clock on. on Friday. Hold on for a second. The fire, Mike, the fire chief's still here. The fire chief's sitting there. Oh, okay. Uh, and then they usually call for an inspection for the fire alarm systems in October 20th. Uh, I got notified by Sam today that the permits have been pulled. Because Bobby is a member of the fire department, the state will be gone Friday to do the inspection. I can't do the inspection. Right. Okay. We can't. We can't. You know, that's that's you first and foremost. Can't, right. You can't give an appeal until the state comes in. Number one. Yeah. Number two, you've got an issue with guardrail. Right. So what's the fix for that? It's it's a Jersey barrier. It's something. Right. Put the guardrail in. How far is it for us? I don't know. Who who restricted you on the guardrail, Mike? Well, that's not the guardrail. It's the fact that we had to put in the, what we had to put in is the timeline that we had given by the conservation, which is in the um, um, the restricted time, November first to. Uh, well, actually, we got okay to go to December thirtieth, but we barely made what we got in done by November uh, December thirtieth. So. But the guardrails on the. But you guardrails just that, on right? the, the, the retaining wall. Yeah. No, it doesn't sit on the retaining wall. It goes in front of the retaining wall. It goes in front of the retaining wall. So it's in the parking lot. It's in the parking lot where the tanks are going to be, kind of. Behind right. there. No, well, it's way back in the back corner. I'm sorry, I don't have a plan to show you. But I can, hold on. 
but also you have to remember, I couldn't work on the site until October 15th. Yeah. So mm -hmm. from the back, and so theoretically, people would drive in for the drive-through and then go around and take a look at those parking spots right there too. But even when you were shut down, we allowed you to work. Not, not on the site. So my general concern I have is that I, I well, I, I personally acknowledge that the donut shop and the convenience store are not in play. If I am going to get my car repaired, I am driving into a site. I don't know where I'm driving. I don't know where I'm parking. I'm getting out of my vehicle. I'm going into a building. I'm sitting there waiting for my car to be fixed. He's got used cars that are going to be sold on the lot. There's no site layout. So there's how is it a safe environment for people to go back and forth from the waiting room to their cars, out of the site? <laughs> I, I just are you talking the parking spot? Yeah, the site in general, that's our main concern, right? The site. The site is not complete. So how do you how do you say that a site is safe when you don't have a traffic flow? Who's going around the building? How can you go around the building? Well, it, that's the thing. You'd, you'd have to come up with a fix. Like, you can't go around the building. Put a bunch of jersey barriers up to block it off, but that'll take care of the guardrail issue. Well, I, I, I don't think the fire chief would <laughs> appreciate being blocked off from going around the building. So he, he's in a conundrum right, right now. I mean, that's not a. All right, so you got to come up with a fix. You got to come up with a fix, Mike. Yeah. See, well, it, 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 I can't paint. I can't paint. The, the only thing I think here is the issue, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, is the the guardrail, which I can certainly put Jersey barriers there, barriers there temporarily until spring opens up, so I can go back to work in the wetland jurisdiction. You know, uh, that would solve that issue. I have no problem. You know, I can have those done immediately and delivered and set. The the paint on the on the lines, um, I, for parking spaces, uh, it is an issue. If if we can't open up and have to wait till April fifteenth, that seems to be a stretch for parking. I mean, people when they sit drop off a car, he doesn't allow them to drive in. They pull up. He goes out. They come in. What can I do for you? He takes the car and brings it into the garage. They sit in the waiting room. He brings the car out. Your car's out front of the door. You can go get it, just like he does now at at, a, at his place now. I don't think his current so, place has any lines. <laughs> well, it's a dirt. It's dirt. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. The lines. There's no signage out there. There's no guidance. And oh no, the signage is all there. All right. So so what? All right. So how about the lining? Nick's meeting commit. I mean, he's got to get a permit Friday. He's got to get a. You can't, you can't say anything, anything till today that. Till, till that. The state comes in. I mean, we can't do anything today. What, is, what go does Sam the, think about this? Does he know on a partial? Because that would lock out the the, oh. the the shop. I mean, everything but the what the, the shop will be working, but the donut shop, the, the store, and all that stuff would be a, a, a secondary occupancy. If he meets the requirements, he meets the requirements, and I think Sam is fine with it, and he meets the requirements, I think, but we're all genuinely concerned about piecemealing together a project that was approved as a whole. I mean, there's a, a one-way designation to come in around the building. Yeah, for so that signage. Just yeah. certain things like that. I mean, I know it sounds minuscule, and, and you can laugh, but I mean, if you're driving into a site and somebody's coming out of the other way, and you don't know if it's a one-way, and there's no signage, there's no striping, there's no well, arrow. Th that, that, that's not true. We have signage that says, do not enter at the front of the building that can't go around one way. It's only able to go around one direction. That signage is in place. But so, you know, there's no way there's gonna be coming two different directions around the building. All so, the all the finished signage signage is in, the only thing missing is the lines. Is that what correct. you're saying? Correct. That's correct. And the the lineage, the, the the arrows and all that is really for the drive up. It's you know in in the gas station, not not for parties you know, customers that come in, it's, it's it's low volume for cars coming into his repair shop compared to gas station, convenience store, and a driver. That would require all the lines and all the arrows on the ground. So, Rebecca, what's the concerns that Sam has? Do we have a page of it? We have a page of concerns based upon building code and not meeting certain requirements. Mike, you got to do some paint. You got to do what? You got to paint. It, uh, there's no reason why you can't put paint down over the binder and then just when the finished coat gets down, repaint it. 
And then, Mike, we want to see the concerns. Of, we want to see what Sam has to – what his yeah. list is. You just come in and we don't have anything on it. So yeah. I you saw you on the screen. I have not – it's not even on the agenda. So I want to see what Sam has to say for a list. You still – you just got well. a permit for the fire. So the state's coming in on Friday. I can't open up a place that hasn't been approved. All right. Um Sam sent me to Rebecca. All right, so we got we got paint. Guardrails. Guardrails. So what about the guardrails? What the Jersey if, area? If you, you if you accept the the uh, temporary fix until spring of April fifteenth, I would put put Jersey barriers where the guardrail goes. And I'd like to confirm the signage, because I haven't seen the signage and I know that there was no handicapped parking spaces. So, so there's, there's gotta do a site walk during the week. Yeah, we'll do, yeah, we'll do a site visit during the week. Yeah, so so, so you, you got to come up with a fix for that for that guardrail. I, I don't understand why you can't put that in now. In the conservation, it, it's your holdup. Okay, now I understand the snow, but but that's it is a conservation up. issue. Okay, so conservation asking if you could put the guardrail in for safety concerns. I, I it's, will, it's in the lot. Well, he's yeah, proposing the Jersey barriers as a temporary rail. I mean, that would serve the same purpose until right. April, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I will say, I was. I was, I mean, I'm the conservation person as well oh, as the planning we person. So <laughs> I was at the meeting and the Jersey, <laughs> the Jersey barrier issue was not brought to the conservation issue or conservation commission to be done during the seasonal restriction. They did not bring that to us. So it, it's not that the conservation commission didn't allow it. It's that they didn't ask. What about the guardrail itself? The, the guardrail itself no, that, was approved with the- That's what she's talking about. Oh, okay. it was approved. But as far as the seasonal restriction, they could have added, they could have done the guardrail when they asked to do the paving and the curbing, but- Can they still do it now? The commission might want them to put in for another seasonal restriction later. Okay. Which- So what's wrong with that? They, they would have to pay for it again. Which is what, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks? Um, <laughs> so it would be- $400 a day. Yeah. Uh, what Mike just said. Um, okay. Well. But, and Mike Maroney, just so you're aware, the commission does have a meeting next Wednesday. Um, if this is something you want to bring up to them, shoot me an email and I can add it to the agenda. So the idea that we have, at least from Town Hall's perspective, and, and I think that it, it's been kind of a mutual issue is that you know we we want to see the business open we want to see them succeed we, we we want everything to go smoothly but as we've experienced with the gas station stuff there's constantly things that are being either withheld or weren't followed through or you know they didn't get the application in on time they didn't pull a permit they didn't get the inspection they didn't do this they didn't do that and it's constantly us trying to accommodate 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 I get it. and we have a decision that was issued back in 2017 that says you must meet these conditions and now we're being asked to waive these conditions when so they're... So it's paint and guardrail, though. Can't they have snow? No, I think it's more than that, Wally. I mean, we gotta, I want to see what Sam's list is. Oh, Sam's got a list? Sam's got a list. I know they're trying to knock things off, and I know Mike has been responsive with trying to, to meet those those, okay. those right. conditions. So when's our next meeting? I, I, I would like to say one thing, though, that, you know, all the things that Rebecca just said had nothing to do with me. Um, it was Those things were done be prior to me arriving on the job. I, you know, I mean, as far as the build, so you know, the permitting and stuff like that, as far as the gas right station right. and all that we is, did. is, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately came with the owner. So can you, Mike, we did try to accommodate you to come in for the special permit with the tanks. That was back in April, May. You guys, you guys dragged your feet and told God knows when Rebecca, when was that? It was like four or five months. You could have just come in, we could have got it done, and it would have been open by now. So I, we have been I, very accommodating throughout this whole procedure. Unfortunately, I'm not on that team, and it's above my pay grade. I sent them an email to, before the 30th to the owner and the lawyer, said you need to respond or they're going to put a stop worker on, on on this. And I told Rebecca that. And I have no say in how this, I don't own the property, and I'm not the owner, and I'm not the developer. I am just the builder who hired to build the project. But I'm on this team, and I was here throughout the whole process, and we begged you guys to come in. All 
but it's not me. See, but I'm saying I tried to get them to come to okay. the planning board. Do we have one? Yeah. Uh, the next schedule. Um, it would be the. It would be. Yeah, the fifteenth. February fifteenth. We yeah. have two weeks. All right. So, may I suggest that we get uh, on the agenda for the? I'm not available. Oh. Okay, so someone else can. Because you're gonna, yep. I'm, I'm anticipating on the 15th, everything's gonna be done. <laughs> is, is what the intent of that is. So I don't care who comes in, but you know it's up to the board here. And then in the meantime, they get the conservation approval for the guardrail. The paint goes down, the guardrail goes in, Sam's list gets whittled off, and at the completion of that, by the 15th, fire inspection, they, fire. fire inspection. Okay, they come in and see us. Everything has to it, be done. But everything's got to be done. Yeah, you know, and if Sam Sam wants the two piece DOC, is he going to need more inspections, more stuff for the, as you called it, the donut shop and the and the grocery store? That's fine because the tanks aren't in either. You're going to need another one actually for the for the a tank inspection. Yeah, where's the tanks the going in? Huh? Where's the tanks going? I, I don't know, but for this purpose, if I understand this right, it's just for the mechanics and to work the gar the garage bays, not open anything else in. But That's correct. But to Rebecca's point, it, you, you know, you get Joe Blow coming in there. They don't even know where they're going. So paint is cheap. And uh, and your other holdup is that we know of is that guardrail for us. But I don't know what Sam's got. And then the fire inspection, you already got scheduled. So <coughs> I think you could be done in two weeks and come back and see us then. Is that for um, to the best I can, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving for 10 days. So. Well, see what? Somewhere warm. All right, you gotta. Somebody's gonna have to take so, the. Somebody's range. gonna have to get that going. If you can, what's an emergency approval for conservation on a guardrail? <laughs> I mean, I can I can bring it to the commissioner and see what he has to say about it. Um, it would probably have to be then approved at the meeting next week. But I could see if the commissioner would do kind of a quick. I mean, Mike, how many days would you need to put in the guardrail? Uh, well, it's probably two days to do it, but we don't even have anybody on board right now to even do it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, I mean, if, and you don't even have it ordered, do you? No. Okay. So, I mean, in that case, then our, the meeting is next Wednesday. We can probably just put it on the agenda for them then because it doesn't sound like you would be able to do it before then anyway, that's correct? That's correct. Okay, so I can, it's we can, we can do it that way. It, is it wood? I would think it would have to be wood. Yep. It wood. So Jersey barriers in, in place with the okay to do it, and then as soon as you just push a sheet of wood, I mean, it just it yeah. doesn't have to be ordered. I don't know. Okay, so you still should better get it in then. Right, that's yeah. my point. Yeah, okay. So we'll see you on the 15th from the planning board perspective, and then hopefully everything will be done. And then we can do our part. Does right. that sound good? Yep. John, good yeah, with you? Yeah. That's good. Okay. All right. That's that. We'll see you on the 15th. See you on the 15th, summer. Mike. Summer will be there. Won't be me. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Is that it? Yeah, no, thank you. you. Oh, we got more? Town planner update. I'm going to make it so fast. Um, that Wood Street property that was in front of us last week, um, they have gone back to the drawing board and are now considering a duplex. Um, I got a call from an engineering firm about a question about just moving a partial part of a lot line that they're getting ready to file an ANR for. Um, Who's the owner of the Wood Street? The uh, par Parsons? No, it's not Petroski. It's okay. definitely not that street. Um, and then it's 20, 26, 26 was it? Wood Street. Wait. Okay. Um, and then the Shared Street branch, Rennie and I are looking at together. Um, mass, vul mass Vulnerability Preparedness grant. We are waiting to hear back on um, data from the engineer. And then I'm currently working through um, MBTA zoning changes that um, the town is going to have to comply with. Um, more on that later. 
Um, MBTA, did you say? Yeah, I'm not. You got yeah. buses coming? No, we are an MBTA adjacent community, and because of that, we are going to have to create a zoning overlay that creates multifamily units that are, it's like, for every one acre, you have to be able to zone for 15 units, and Groveland minimum is 750 units. Yes. <laughs> so so much for 10%. Yeah, so we're, I'm... Uh, MVTC, a lot of our other communities are working through kind of the same thing. Yeah. So, wow. I'll get there with More that. to come. Okay. We're still learning. We're still learning about it. We're still figuring out what we can do. But um, I and am. It's not overly intimidating too, because yes. if you think about it, it can already be a developed land, yes. but it would has met the requirements of that contiguous. Yes. 10 acres, okay, got it. 50 acres. So, like, if you were thinking about it, if, if the if the property over on School Street has 50 acres, multifamily would be ideal in that location based upon what the parameters would be like. Yeah. That's already in play. That can be added to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so, okay. This, so that's our understanding right now. Yeah. So it's, it's not like we have to create 700 and right, so right. on. Exactly. So this, it's so to this create the zoning that <coughs> will allow for that at at by mm -hmm. right. So it's a it's a post post zoning thing. The I intent know. is not necessarily to be post, <coughs> but yeah. there's ways that we can work with it. Yeah. Okay. That's we're yeah, we're working I on it. it. And that is all I have. Okay. That's worth telling you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. That's all I So have. I say motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you and thank you all for watching. Good night. Good night. Good night, Groban. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, John. Bye, John. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.